Something terrible is happening to boomers. Guys, what's happening? What's happening to you? Are you okay? You doing all right? I'm concerned now. What's happening? Vincent Chan, check it out. What's going on with baby boomers? Let's do it. There are 73 million baby boomers in the US and they can all retire by 2030. But at the same time, 45% of baby boomers have no retirement savings and they are now the fastest growing generation. Did he say 45? Did I catch that right? Did he say 45? To become home. But at the same time, 45% of baby boomers have no retirement savings and they are now the fastest growing generation to become homeless. I really wonder if that number is going to go up in time, like in terms of like per generation. I really wonder if that number, this 45% number is going to be a lot high. It's going to be over 50% for both millennials and Gen Z, right? I mean, that just makes sense to me. So if everyone is saying baby boomers are the wealthiest generation, what's going on? Yeah, right. What happened to all their money? Chances are, when you think of retirement, you see yourself sipping spicy margaritas in Costa Rica or cruising down the Miami freeway, counting your money. All thanks to the three-legged <laughs> stool. In finance, the stool basically represents the three most common ways retirees receive income in their twilight mm. years. The only problem is, the three legs are starting to get wobbly. Firstly, there's savings to think about. After uh -huh. working for 46 years, you're expected to have a like sizable nest egg saved up from savings. which you can slowly withdraw from after you stop working. The problem is, the average baby boomer isn't prepared. 45% yeah. of baby boomers have no retirement savings. Yeah. And out of those who do, 28% have less than $100,000 saved. Now, 100000 Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's not gonna... <laughs> that's not gonna do anything for you. I mean, you know, what are you gonna... You gonna live for... Two years on that, maybe some like extreme, like silent, silent era, silent generation can live like for what, four, four years on that because <laughs> they, you know, <laughs> have experienced extreme poverty or something like that. Yeah, I don't. I, mm, uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's not going to work. Dollars might sound like a lot of money, but on average, people older than 65 spend about fifty two thousand dollars a year to live. There's yeah, rising medical insurance. expenses, delicious yeah. sugar-free applesauce, and Billy Joel concert tickets. Stupid. You don't have to be a math whiz to realize the average baby boomer will burn through their savings sooner rather than later. And it's already happening. Baby boomers are now the fastest growing generation to experience homelessness. In the 1990s, 11% of the homeless population were 50 and older. Wow. Today, that number is nearly 50%. Many baby boomers across the country are now coming to terms with the reality that working your entire adult life is no longer enough to guarantee that you'll have a roof over your head in your later years. So we know the savings leg can't be relied on. What about the other two? But first, if you want to easily save more money, then you have to use a savings goal tracker and checklist. Uh, here we I'm go. giving away Good mine job. for free, link down below. Yep, During okay. the Great Depression, many working families lost their jobs. Businesses collapsed, people starved, and food rations became the norm. One of the groups hit the hardest were older Americans, who despite working for 46 years of their lives, now lived in poverty. In response, President Roosevelt passed the Social Security Act in 1935 to provide a financial safety net for retirees. Oh boy. Basic now, I, I grew up understanding that I'm not going to have Social Security. Like, this is going to be not, there's, it's not going to be there for me. Because already, my whole entire life, they've been talking about this, it, it's just running out, it's going to be insolvent, all that kind of, it, there's not going to be money for you. So my whole life, I've grown up kind of understanding like I'm not going to get social security. Right. And you can't live off of that anyways. So something else needs to be figured out than that. I don't know what it is. I, and I don't know. There's a lot to unpack here. I feel like as an aside, I think that retirement is stupid. Like that, the idea of retiring, I don't know, maybe that's because I'm a man or something. I just don't think Granted, there's like, OK, you have to because you got hurt or something, you know, like things like that. But you can always use your brain. I mean, look, I'm doing this. All I'm doing is talking. I'm an idiot with a camera and a microphone. Anybody can do that at any <laughs> at any age. So, you know, there's that. I'm thinking ahead. OK. Basically, retirees received monthly checks from the government to spend on essentials. 
you but don't social security rely on free. the government the government designed it as a pay as you go program they added a new tax for those currently working from every paycheck a bit of money was deducted and put into the social security trust fund in return current workers were promised that they would receive monthly checks from the fund after they retire and it worked after committing decades of their lives to the workforce, retired older Americans could now enjoy some leisure without constantly worrying about finances. Not surprisingly, the poverty rate among elderly households fell from 35% in 1959 to 11% in 1995. Now, Social Security we is the number one right source of that income security level. for retirees, like, we just need to give with over 90% of retirees receiving Social Security benefits. But all of that is about to change. Remember the little promise the government made? Current workers were promised that they would receive monthly checks from the fund after they retire. In the 1980s, President Reagan began to take money from the Social Security fund and spent it on other stuff. Wars, tax oh. cuts for the rich, yeah, and other bad. government programs. That's not good. President Bush and Clinton followed suit. In place of the trillions of Social Security funding they all took, they just put in an IOU, a insane. piece of paper that promises the US government would eventually pay the money back. I didn't know these The problem things. is, they never really did. That's insane. The Social Security fund if has that, been cash flow accurate, negative since 2010, How meaning come, more money is going held? out than coming in. Account. For a long period nobody's of time, ever held baby account. boomers were the largest generation in the US. During their working years, they contribute a lot of money to the fund for the silent generation to draw from. And now that the largest generation is retiring in mass, they're starting to get some of that money back. The problem is, there's now it's fewer workers paying into the system. It's projected that the yeah. Social Security Reserve Fund is going to run out by 2034, yeah. meaning all and new like benefits I said, will come directly from current this, payroll taxes. Right? Like understanding but taxes it. would only cover 77% of their promised full benefits. You can think of it like this. If you were promised a $1,000 Social Security check every month, now you would only enough. receive $770. As the cost of everyday items increase, a 20% yeah, pay nothing. cut is pretty significant. The problem is many Americans believe the 2034 year forecast is guaranteed, but it isn't. It's a warning about what will happen in a good economy. It doesn't really account for the unknown and uncertainty of what could happen during a bad one. Oh Since boy. 2019, the size of the gap between what Social Security has promised and what it going. expects to pay has grown by nearly $10 trillion, more than 40%. For every $1 that the program has collected in payroll taxes, it has generated roughly $2 of promises that no one expects it to keep. But That's what about good, the man. third leg that baby boomers can hopefully rely on? Prior to the 1980s, pensions were the mainstream private option for retirement income. Basically, companies yeah. would set aside money for their employees, invest that money for them, and then these employees would be guaranteed payouts after they retire. You see, here's the thing. I hate the idea of other people handling my money. I hate that, okay? And I brought it up in a different video where, where uh, they brought up the IRA and I'm just like, yo, right? I, I put money into an IRA and then 2007 happened and it went negative what I put into it. It wasn't just like the interest was gone. It was like, no, 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 no. It was, I put more into it. Let's say, let's just arbitrary numbers. I put $10,000 into it. Now that all that 2007, 2008 happened and now it's 7,500. I'm like, yo, yo, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? All because I let somebody else handle my money. I hate, hate it. I hate it. Maybe it's a necessary evil or something like, you know, like there's all that kind of thing. But I just, I just have that mentality of like, if this idiot can do it, this idiot can do it. Right. If this person can go and learn about this and especially with the Internet today, you can learn whatever the hell you want. It's all on the Internet. Right. College de degrees, depending on what you're doing, are so not necessary. Again, depending on what you're doing. Right. This is a maybe a bit of an oversimplification, but I still I'm just like, if you could do it, I can do it. Hate. I hate it. Just other people handle handling your money. Do you think that other people have your money's best interest for you? or for them. It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. It was a time when company loyalty but actually they don't teach you how to the more you work, there, work with the money, money and handle received, money and, and, and what to do but with money. Ted they don't teach Bennett you investing, all everything. that stuff. He believed pension plans were too Insane. expensive and too risky for companies. 
and so he did something about it. Enter the 401k plan, a much worse retirement option in literally every single way, where you now set your money aside, you pick the investments, and if you don't do this, then too bad, so sad. Companies love this alternative. It was a lot less work and a lot less risk for them, so many stopped offering pension plans and migrated to 401k plans instead, shifting the cost of retirement from the employer to the employee. And the timing was perfect. There were two stock market booms in the 1980s and the 1990s, which easily convinced workers that investing in your own 401k was the better move. From 1980 to 2008, participation in pension plans fell from 38% to 20%, while participation in plans like the 401k increased from 8% to 31%. The problem is, a whole new generation of people who never invested before were now chasing the bull market with the nest egg they needed to retire. Steve Sholo and Dan Robertson were two public school teachers who didn't know much about finance, but they saw everyone else was raving about the 401ks, so they decided to join in. By 1996, they had doubled their retirement nest egg to $500,000. By 1999, their portfolio topped $1 million. And they were thrilled. They Huge. thought they made the best decisions of their lives. But Again, the only thing that's going to do that for you is real estate, the stock market, owning a business or inheriting, right? That's that's how you get rich, right? What el what else is there? What else is there? Robbing somebody. Okay. <laughs> right? You don't want to do that. That's a bad idea. But that but that's it. Stock market and investing in that way. Real estate and investing in that way. Owning a business and investing in that way. That's that's it. You're not going to do it off of a job. You're never going to do it off of a job. Anyways, by the early 2000s, the dot-com bubble burst, and Sholo and Robertson saw their fortune crater from $1.5 million down to $500,000. Tens of thousands of people who had been on the verge of retirement were now forced back to work because they lost everything. But the problems didn't stop there. Whenever money and investing is involved, you can bet Wall Street finds an opportunity to profit. This is Robert Hilton Smith, an economist who regularly contributed to his 401k plan, who one day noticed something was off about his account. Despite the market doing relatively well, his 401k investment account was barely increasing. Uh -huh. After digging for days and weeks, he finally saw where his money like was these? going. The plan itself was invested into more than 20 different mutual funds, and that's too each much. of which had its own costs fees. and fees. Oh, yeah. There's yes, asset yes. management yes. fees, trading fees, marketing Terrible. fees, record keeping fees, administrative fees, fees for not knowing there were fees. A yeah. 2 to 3% fee might seem inconsequential, but it's not. Just as investing your money allows you to compound and increase your wealth in the long term, cost and fees also rise exponentially over time. Suppose you have an investment portfolio worth $60,000. You plan to contribute $500 a month to it for the next 25 years, and it grows at an average rate of 8% per year. At the end, you'd have $884,635 in your portfolio. That's a lot of money. But if you had a 2% fee, you'd be left with only $606,450. That tiny 2% fee costs you $278,000. In 2012, Hilton Smith reported that on average, an American family will pay nearly $155,000 in 401k fees to Wall Street over their lifetime. But that's not even the worst of it. The idea behind these high fees is that when it comes to mutual funds in your 401k, a professional is helping you invest your money to beat the stock market. The problem is, about 51% of actively managed funds fail to do so. You're actually statistically better off hiring this cat, Orlando. In <laughs> That's 2013, why I'm like, yo, Orla nah, just learn how to do it yourself. Forget all that. A lot of people don't have the time to do that. I, I understand. I understand. Just put your money in queues or in spy or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever. I don't know. It's insane. It's all fully insane. I'm not a financial advisor. Orlando outperformed experienced I just think it's qualified bullshit. wealth managers <laughs> at picking stocks. And the best part, Orlando doesn't require any hidden fees. Right. Just a can of tuna once in a while. About 12,000 people will turn 65 every single day in 2024. The problem is, their 401k plans are being wiped out. Fidelity found that the average 401k balance fell by 23% in Q3 of 2023, and many are expecting the stock market to get even worse. 
According to McKinsey, Americans are living longer are. than ever thanks to better working conditions and healthcare innovations. Life expectancy has nearly doubled since the late 1890s, which is great. We all have more time to spend with our parents and grandparents. The only problem is, it now takes a lot more money to retire than what we, our government, and economy originally anticipated. In economics, they call this the old age dependency ratio. Basically, it's the number of individuals older than 65 per 100 people of working age. The higher the ratio, the greater the burden on the current workforce and overall economy to support and provide for the retirees. Government services and programs will be stretched, taxes will need to be increased on the working population to support the increased expenses, and potential pressure to increase the retirement age for future generations. The average old age dependency ratio across OECD countries like the UK, Australia, and Germany is 28, meaning for every 100 working age people, there are 28 individuals who are 65 years or older. The problem is, this ratio is projected to hit 50% in the US by 2075. As housing, education, childcare, and food prices continue to climb, many Americans are struggling to make ends meet. As a result, more and more of the younger generation are refusing to have kids. If you think yeah. about it, our yeah, entire social and economic that. structures yeah. have the same issues as a Ponzi scheme. If the yeah. next generation isn't bigger than the last, it impacts almost everything. As you get older and retire, expenses go down. No more overpriced drinks at the bar or buying the latest tech gadgets. But there is one expense that will go up without fail. One particular crisis that baby boomers will have to face head on. Medical. A 2017 research study found that a healthy 65-year-old couple retiring will need to spend $275,000 to cover their healthcare costs in retirement. Doctor visits, 20 different pills, and stress balls. 70% of baby boomers will need some form of long-term care, assisted living, hospice care, or nursing homes. The problem is, the so average cost of a nursing home is between $7,908 no, 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 and $9,034 no, 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 per month. No, no, no. So where are baby boomers? Okay, and in this, and previously it used to be you had a big family and your kids or one of your kids or two of your kids or however many, you know, would kind of take care of you. You know, that's why it's like a mother-in-law suite, right? A mother-in-law unit or whatever, right? And an in-law suite type of thing that type of idea right it's like okay you have a house or a property or a whatever that you all can live in <laughs> or live on right not saying you need to even be in the same building but that kind of thing there's not really that anymore because people aren't having kids and or enough kids for that to happen so then what happens yeah expected to get this kind of money from. Most don't have enough in savings, social security will be cut, and 401k plans are crashing. But if you want to quickly save more money, using a savings goal tracker and checklist okay. right, is the buddy. most effective right, way to buddy. do that. Right, get buddy. mine for free, link right, down buddy. below. Yep. You might think one option is Medicare, basically federal health insurance for people uh, no, over 65. No, no, the answer is not it's government. It's more affordable than <laughs> private insurance. The problem is Medicare doesn't cover long-term care. So the other option is Medicaid, basically health insurance for low-income Americans. But to be eligible for Medicaid, you need to be at or below 133% of the federal poverty they need level. You poor. Meaning most middle-class baby boomers will be in between being too poor to They need you fully dependent. They need you fully dependent. For the care they need and too rich to qualify for Medicaid. But even if they're able to get long-term care, there's still one more problem. Getting into a nursing home is more challenging than ever. Nursing homes are experiencing staffing shortages, overcrowding issues, and many are actually operating Just at bad. a loss. As a result, a more than 1,000 nursing homes have closed since 2015, and more are on their way out. But there might be one last saving grace for baby boomers who still have a decent life into their twilight years their children. The problem is, millennials are in a tough spot themselves. Housing affordability, stagnating wages, and a looming debt crisis. Many won't be able to get time off work to provide the complex, ongoing assistance their parents might require. And they can't afford to quit because households can no longer support themselves with a single income. Some millennials <laughs> will be forced to take reduced hours <laughs> or look for a job with more flexibility, potentially resulting in lower pay. 
meaning they'll be in a tough spot of having to choose between caring for their aging relatives and their own financial survival. For me personally, family comes before everything else. But for many millennials, they'll need to determine if they themselves will have enough money when they retire. A 2006 research study found that when family members over 50 take on unpaid caregiving roles, they'll lose on average over $300,000 in lost income and benefits, which is a substantial amount. But it's more than just money. There's the mental, physical, and emotional exhaustion that you will undoubtedly experience. Yeah. And what's even more terrible can only be summarized by this yeah, post. I have a friend who's you end up in a strange dynamic where you wish for the day when you don't have to deal with the daily caregiving stressors. Yeah. And then you realize that you are longing for the death of your parents, yeah. which is a Pretty. strange and terrible place to be. Yeah. But what if I told you that the baby boomer crisis should be the least of your worries? What most people don't realize is that something weird is happening to your job. For one of the first times in history, people are getting fired without actually getting fired. Click here to learn what's happening and how you can stop oh, it from happening to I you. I see. Good job, buddy. Wow. Vincent Chan with the old. All right. Good job. Good job, buddy. That was slick. <laughs> that was slick. All right. <laughs> that was slick. The YouTube algorithm loves you. Wow. Amazing. Uh, something terrible is happening to boomers. Uh, there was a lot that was interesting in this. Obviously, not everybody's situation is the same. I think it's really tough. It's tough. I don't know what the answer is. I see how there's got to be some type of like government safety net, if you will, type of thing. But at the same time, I don't think government is the answer. I don't like that answer. I don't think that's a good answer. That's me. They don't have your best interest they don't they don't they just don't they just don't i mean we're currently in a government where they're just going to take your money and give it to some other nation you know instead of putting it back into the people that are paying for them so i just don't and that's just one <laughs> that's just one example just one issue right i just don't think that that's the best solution I obviously don't know what the best solution is because I'm just an idiot with a camera and a microphone, but it's a problem. It's a problem, not for everybody, but for some people, probably a lot of people, it's a problem. So boomers, how are you doing out there? Let me know in the comments. I hear from you like every day <laughs> in the comments. It seems like, you know, some of you are right. Some of you talk about golfing. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at you. <laughs> I've never, I've been around a lot of the golf thing because I used to play with a golf rapper. You know, I'm not interested, not interested. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. How you doing out there? Something terrible is happening. You guys are uh, not able to afford it and you have kids. Do your kids care? Maybe you don't have kids. Maybe, uh, maybe your kids, you know, that's another thing. Maybe a lot of your kids don't live anywhere near you. That's a whole other thing. It's just all bad. And, and uh, who wants to live in live in a nursing home? I always thought that like living in a nursing home or or that type of thing was like a last resort type of option, like last resort. Nobody wants to live in a nursing home. Aside from it being super expensive, they also don't have your best. And, you know, they're they're just trying to basically keep you alive, <laughs> like give you give you enough. But often they say that once you go into a nursing home, it's just like a quick decline. There's a lot of examples of that. You know what I'm talking about. Anyways, it, it's a wreck. There it is. All right, boomers. Take care. <laughs> I'll catch you later. Bye.